Let's continue our discussion about discrete probability distributions. So in 7.3, we're specifically focused on uniform discrete distributions, but I also want to show you the RGuru technology because those bugs that we had at some point are now fixed. So no more having to calculate mean standard deviation out by hand or any other technology that I showed you. Um, our guru is good to go. So the difference between just a regular discrete probability distribution and a uniform one is the uniform one, the only difference would be that the probabilities are all identical across the board. So one of the classic examples would be the six-sided die. So when we roll a six-sided die, there are six numbers that could possibly be at the top of the die when we roll. And each one of those six, as long as it's what we call a fair die, which means that it's not weighted to one side or the other, then each one of those numbers on the die have an equal chance, equal probability of occurring. So there's a one out of six chance because each number is one out of six numbers. So that gives a probability of one out of six. Suppose a purchasing agent has just received a pricing and delivery schedule from a new vendor. The delivery schedule was coded as one to four weeks. The purchasing agent wishes to construct a probability distribution for the time until delivery. Now, without any prior information, the agent believes any time frame is as likely as any other because there's no historical data to tell him otherwise. Hence, the number of weeks until delivery will be assumed to be a uniform distribution. And therefore, we would say that one week, there is a one out of four chance. Two weeks for delivery is it one out of four chance and so on. Now, as the historical data gets compiled, we may see that it is much more likely that it takes two weeks over any other option. So, for example, let's say we do 10 deliveries and five of those deliveries happened within a two week period. Then these probability distribution would change as the one quarter for two weeks would change to a half and therefore changing the other three probabilities and then it would no longer be uniform. Now, I wanted to bring you over to our guru to show you how to calculate the mean and standard deviation for discrete probability distributions now that our guru is working properly. So let me find my screen real quick. Here it is. All right, so let me log in. Let me start by using the data set that I was trying to do in the last section with probability distributions that are not equal, and then we'll do an example with the die. We'll do that one. Okay, so when we go to data, I have created a data set right here, discrete probability distribution from 7.2. Remember, this was the personality test that the psychologist had given at a place of employment where one was extremely passive and five was extremely aggressive. We go to functions, summary statistic, select my data set. The numerical is going to be your X's. Frequency is always your P of X's. And if you want the variance or you need the variance for the problem, be sure to select that box. Now we've discussed how our guru does not calculate standard deviation and variance for populations, but for a probability distribution, it doesn't really have a choice. That is the only option is calculating population data. Okay, when you do a calculation, it says all observations. So you just have one more click. And we can see that the mean is 2.94 with a standard deviation of 1.27. So it's working properly now. Now let's try another one. Let's try one for the uniform distribution and let's practice creating the distribution from scratch. So I'm going to go to data import. I'm going to create a new data set. And this first variable I am going to call x. And that is going to be the six numbers on the die, so one to six, and then I'll add a row and we'll call this variable the probability of x happening. 
And I did this before by using fractions, one divided by six, and I it didn't work. And now I know why it didn't work. And it was because uh, our guru does not take the fraction and do the math like our calculators do. If we were putting this into the list or even Excel and I put one divided by six, it would divide and create the decimal for me. But for our guru, it does not. So you will have to calculate one divided by six and put in the approximate decimal. I'm gonna say four decimal places so that it's as accurate as we can. But of course, with the fact that we are not putting in an exact fraction, uh, that will affect the outcome of, um, of the calculations that it's gonna calculate. So that just means that if you're still off by a certain amount of decimal places for the homework, you're just gonna to wanna to expand these decimal places. So one sixth of the decimal is 0.1666666 repeating. So let's say that I did four decimal places, but my mean and my standard deviation were off by, let's say Hawks learn and asked for three decimal places. Well, the only way to fix that would be to add a few more decimal places onto your probability for each one of these and that will solve your problem. So the farther you go out in decimal places and rounding, then as calculations happen, we have to consider that we just need like the two or three decimal places um, that the homework is asking for to not be affected by our rounding, which just means that when we round the very first time, we have to expand to more decimal places than we might have um, originally planned. So I'm gonna save this as the uniform discrete distribution. Save. Remember when you create a set, you do have to give it a name and save it so that it shows up in your data list. Again, I always double click and check that everything got made correctly with labels up in the gray and data values in the white. And then we go to functions, summary statistic, select the data set we want to calculate the mean and standard deviation for. We need to make sure that we select two variables because we have two lists or columns in our data set that we need both to be included in this calculation. And I'll hit my eyeball. So we can see that the mean is three and a half and the standard deviation is 1.7. Okay. This concludes this section on um, furthering our discussion on discrete probability distributions.